Hey, everybody. Gary Smith is still out. That is Kaz Kenny. <laughs> and I am Eddie Bramble, and this is episode 19 of the Blackwater Zoo podcast. On, ain't we? we are getting there, buddy. Mm. Um, before we get into the fishing report, uh, Gary is out actually with, uh, he's having his gallbladder removed. Yep, and so he, he might be out a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, so. Well, it'll be, this is uh, a little bit before, so it won't be tomorrow morning on, on when the episode airs. Yeah, so it'll be this, since we're pre-recording, week, week this, will be, this will be not, so next week, we ha- this week we have Marson, and next week I guess we'll air Chuang, and right. then the week after that I guess we'll air Daryl. Or, I was thinking we might even throw a bonus one in there before the festival to try to get some try to, yeah. get something else in there, so we'll see what happens. So go ahead with this week's fishing report, Cass. So let's talk about the fishing report today. It's breaking loose down here at Black, where I'm talking to lots of people. The yellow perch are running hard up in uh, the state park up there. I'm hearing up uh, Tuckahoe and up that way. They're catching plenty of yellow perch, big ones. Uh, a lot of the fish have uh, rowed out, so they'll be turning around, and they'll be leaving here very shortly. So try to get over there next day or two and get on your yellow perch. But keep in mind, shortly behind these yellow perch, here comes them white perch. So we have that to fish for a couple more weeks after the yellow perch leave. Over here in Blackwater, I talked to Justin today. Uh, a few yellow perch over on the big side of Big Blackwater. Uh, some white perch are showing up over there. Uh, we picked up how many pounds of snakeheads did we get, Eddie? From um, 120. 120. Mm-hmm. So we got some snakeheads today. We're gonna get some more nuggets on the market here at. Uh, Actually, I'm thinking, store. I think I'm gonna do tenders this time. Tenders. Mm-hmm. Do strips. Mm-hmm. That sounds interesting. I like that. Um, so yeah, back to the fishing report. The snakeheads uh, guys are catching them today, so I'm sure we're gonna see lots of pictures. Um, yeah, man. I mean, everything's breaking loose. Even I don't care where you're at. Fish are starting to bite. So just get out there, get your line wet, and start catching some fish, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. So this week we have. Uh, Trong on from, uh, from SS custom baits. Trong, how you doing today, buddy? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on guys. Yeah, man. So, it. so, uh, really tell us a little bit about yourself. So, uh, I, am um, fishing pretty much since I was in, uh, fourth grade around there, uh, started fishing for bass all the way up until about 2015. I caught my first snakehead around, uh, New Jersey. Yeah, baby. I mean, uh, being Vietnamese, I kind of knew about snakehead and didn't know anything about fishing for snakehead, but I knew what they were. And, uh, I heard about they were in the area, so I thought I'd just try catching one. First one I got was like eight inches. <laughs> I swear to God, it was like that's about like standard. This, this long, <laughs> they can all be big, on, they can all be fun. That's right. right. <laughs> uh, try to catch it with a frog, it kept t- popping at it, and I, I couldn't get a hook set. And I was like, let me switch to something smaller. So I got to put on a Senko, and I uh, hooked them. I was like, this little fish put up that kind of fight, and ever since then I was I was hooked. And um, you know, it actually took me a whole year until the next season before I caught my next one. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so it's 2016 was when I really started um, targeting them uh, pretty much exclusively. I think I think that's about the time that me and you connected at one, yep. of, the, one of the shows yeah. up there. Oaks, Oaks uh, show. Yeah. Oaks, PA. Yeah. I, remember, I remember we were talking a little bit about snakeheads and what I was seeing and what you were seeing. And right. I think I think you guys were kind of like, man, ain't no way them guys. I totally didn't buy it. <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was like, yeah, right, Cass. <laughs> I mean, they're addicting. So, so, you yeah. start, so you started catching your first snakehead year 2016. You got into it. Uh, we know you're passionate about snakeheads. We know you love snakeheads. We all do. Um, you've been around the world fishing for some snakeheads. Yeah, man. Soon, um, man. After Northerns, it was, you know, I was like, this is one species. This, what other species are there? So, and then I found we found out bullseye snakehead in uh, Florida. I was watching mm-hmm. some of those adventures. And, uh, I was fortunate enough to have a buddy who works for... Um, Spirit Airlines. He, oh, fantastic. Uh, hooks me up, and uh, we go down there every once in a while, and uh, we just hit up the canals, residential lakes. It's a uh, different style of fishing. Really fun bullseyes, uh, snakeheads, on topwater frogs. So what, what, what's the difference in, in fishing for them? Is it different technique, or is it do they attack differently? Or what, what have you you seen the difference between they're, the northern and bullseye? They're, you know, different species, different fish. It's kind of like from a smallmouth to a largemouth, right? Oh, wow. Okay. So I personally, a lot of, a lot of people will tell you as well, Bullseye snakehead, or they fight harder. They okay. just have more stamina. Uh, as, as far as their dynamics and the way they're shaped, are they are they are they more like like I was looking at snakeheads, and, and I always say they're they're so strong because of the aerodynamics and the shape of their body. Yeah. I mean, is that why the bullseyes are so, so much stronger? They got a skinnier body, or more I don't a, know what it is about that shape, but they just keep running. Yeah, they don't stop in the water. So once you hook into one, it just keeps. Poland, drag. Um, <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, yeah. right? No, not at all. Um, and the one, uh, a really characteristic thing about them as well is they death roll a lot. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, a lot more than uh, Northerns do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, as far as, like, tracking, I I, I personally feel like them tracking um, topwater frogs, they're a lot more efficient 
and effective at hitting your um, buzz frog. Are they are they easy to sight fish? I mean, are they that kind of fish, or is it yeah, kind you of, can kind kind of, of be sneaky? Uh, or? Yeah, you de- definitely have to be stealthy with these fish. Um, I don't know if it's because they live at canals and they see a lot of people walking by the banks a lot, but you kind of got to stay away from the bank when you're fishing from. But uh, generally, you walk in a canal, cast parallel down the bank, and uh, you know they'll 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 come in from the from the from the side um, and just slam your frog. That's one technique. Um, you can catch them in deeper water with a spinnerbait, cast into the opposite bank. That's that's what I've had uh, success with. Now, 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 I know you caught a lot more than just bullseyes down there. So let's talk about some of the other species you caught in Florida. Let let let's do this. Let's talk yeah. about each of the places you fished, and we'll go like place by place. So let's let's fin- let's yeah. finish with Florida. What else? So did that you was catch, Florida, you know? um, and then uh, I've caught three species of snakehead: uh, giant uh, northern snakehead, bullseye snakehead, and my favorite, the giant snakehead. Um, so the giants are your favorite. My favorite is giant. Uh, for uh, I mean, I'll tell you why. But um, first experience I had with them was uh, back in October 2017. I went to Thailand, um, hooked up with uh, my friend uh, Oz Bangkok Hooker. Um, he's quite a character <laughs> over there. Um, I'm watching. And he put uh, he put me on uh, some decent giants. I lost a really big one, probably in the double digit area. Um, oh, wow. And I said I get my revenge, which I did um, just last month um, when I went to Vietnam and got a 10 pound giant snakehead. Fantastic. So, and the reason why I like them so much, um, to me, they're, they're the most beautiful fish for they're me. They're very pretty. Yes. Uh, all kinds of colors you can get them in. Um, the shape of that fish is just built for, it's like the perfect combination between a bullseye and a northern, right? Mm. Um, northern, uh, you know, they're, I feel like they're kind of lazy if I, if I have to describe I, it. I, 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 I kind of agree with you, with you yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, I think that first initial run is really hard and then, yeah. you know. They kind of drop off. Absolutely. Um, Bullseye, they got that pulling power, but on the hit, you can see them follow your lure, and then you can kind of react to it. Giant snakehead, there is no follow. It's just an explosion out, out of, of nowhere. nowhere. You, you can reel it as fast as you want, and that's the reason why a lot of guys prefer 9 to 1, uh, nine to one and 10 to 1 reels over wow. there. Wow. Because you can burn a buzzbait um, so fast, and this fish will destroy it. Here's an example. The 16-pound giant snakehead my buddy caught, um, the boatman was driving really fast down the canal because we were losing light. And so we're pitching just at, you know, overhangs or whatever. And so the boat's moving really quickly. My buddy's burning the buzz bait back. And this monster comes out of nowhere and just slams him, throws all kind of water. Uh. Um, and, uh, you know, he landed that fish. But... Uh, it, the ferocity and just the stamina of that fish is just incredible. Now, now I noticed I noticed when you were there fishing, the water didn't seem very clear. You know. Yeah, that water, to be honest with you, looked a lot like a northern snake would live in there. Right. I was like, wow, it's like stained water. There's top water veg- vegetation. There's like it looked like that kind of real big, um, like hydrilla coon- mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. in some areas. And this is Vietnam. You're talking. Yeah, about? this was um, this was a wildlife reserve. So okay. actually, they don't let too many people in there. What uh, I just want to ask this question: Like the areas that you're fishing, is there lots of frogs and things like that around? Yeah, there's a lot of frogs over there. There's a lot of bait fish, and because it's a wildlife, the wildlife reserve there in that that sense of the term is not like here was like wildlife refuge, black water. Right. Um, th- that's a closed off area. It's actually like they only let people who like like biologists in there go study. Sure. It's a, if it's a reserve, they don't let the public in there. It, it's the the middle management. They they let people go in there to fish. They just kind of pay them, <laughs> right? Right, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, every once every every uh, few days in a month, they let people come in there and fish. Yeah, I was watching a, an episode, yeah. a show the other night. Believe it or not, I'm a lot, uh, one of my favorite new TV channels is the NHK on public television, which is a Japanese television show. And I was watching a uh, episode the other night. It was called Cora Falls, K U R A Falls. And it was on an island out there. And it was like you said, it was you couldn't fish, you couldn't do anything. It was a closed off yeah. area. But they were showing on this episode about it. And the, um, the amazing thing about this is, if you went three islands over from where this place was, the 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 what you saw was completely different. Like in this 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 wildlife place it was completely beautiful you know what i mean like just looked untouched they were doing on paddle boards and things like that you know so i thought that was really neat that they didn't allow a lot of traffic in on the actual foot of the island and things like yeah, that you yeah. know what i mean so that was pretty cool the way they so kind of do there, things there's there. not a lot of fishing pressure right in that kind of area right, which right. is really nice so the potentially the world record could come out of there um because 
the biologists that monitor that place, they've caught like giant snakehead up to like close to pushing 30 pounds. Yeah, wow. baby. Whether Holy you can cow. catch them or not right. is a different right. story. Well, that's the thing we stay yeah. here. I mean, we see these fish in the nets that are 18 and 20 pounds right. and we're like, well, where are they at? You know, why aren't they eating they, They're these that baits, big you know? for a reason. Right. right exactly. Yeah. So that, that's one thing we've always taught them. What's the difference from what these big fish are eating from what the smaller fish are eating? How can we get that, that giant? We're trying to figure that out, you know, yeah. and with yeah. him building these baits, we might just find the answer one Absolutely. day, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so, so Tron, where exactly have you been fishing around the world? Uh, uh, so I mentioned Florida, um, Vietnam, Thailand. Real quick, back to Florida. Like yeah. I see a lot of stuff in Florida. Like what other species of fish did you catch? I know you caught some peacocks. There's you? a ton. There's a ton of cichlids in Florida. Yeah. You can't you yeah. can't escape them. They're like the sunnies, uh, the panfish of right. uh, Florida. Right. You know, um, and then uh, peacock bass, another one of my favorites. Um, saltwater species and jacks. I love jacks. Yeah. Some people, you know, trash fish or like bluefish, whatever. But I love those jacks. I like them too. Um, and I caught one snook. And uh, I haven't caught a tarpon yet, but maybe in the future. It's on the list. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's on the list for sure. <laughs> know, that thirty pound giant I love snakehead Florida, man. still <laughs> sitting in my head. Like thirty pound <laughs> snakehead, dude. Good God. Uh, so, um, you know, you went to you went to Thai. You were telling me about uh, the striped snakeheads. Yeah, a, a little bit about them. Let's so the striped snakehead uh, are one of the most common. They call them common snakehead because they're very common. Um, people have mentioned uh, that they're probably the best eating snakehead huh. species. Um, they're very blah looking. They're just brown, you know, brown and black up top. Um, definitely a s- slower presentation. They're very shy fish. Um, huh. Eat small swim baits, tiny little frogs huh. like this. And these guys, so they pour like um, rubber frogs um, in little molds. Um, I don't know too much about catching. I've never caught one. Okay. Um, other than I've seen the one uh, my buddy caught on a buzz bait, uh, which he said like never has he caught a striped <laughs> snakehead. That just shows it goes to show how what kind of pressure this place sees. Right, right. Um, never has he caught a striped snakehead on a buzz bait, um, but he did that afternoon. So, and was there one other snakehead you said you and saw then, there in too? In that in that forest, there was another uh, snakehead species, the China Lucius, which is a forest snakehead. Oh wow! And uh, my buddy's t- telling me yeah, that, that that snakehead behaves a lot like a northern snakehead. Um, but it grows a lot smaller. But the, it's it's very like shy. Color wise, the, these other species I've, I've seen no, the that one's green. That one's like a little bit green, the, not like a snake like pattern like uh, northerns. Right. It's it's weird looking. Uh, I, you'd have to pull it up. Right, but, uh, I see some yeah. of them. You know, like you're it's talking about forest snakehead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that was yeah. the first time I seen one of those. Yeah, I've been I've been I've been reading as much as I can on all different species. Yeah. I mean, every day I probably spend an hour just looking for new articles and new things to yeah, read. Yeah. Just just because just I'm I I like to learn too, yeah, just I've like re- everybody else, you know. Appreciate that you're you're putting up that information so people learn more about it. One thing, um, I think so 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 Taiwan or, or Thailand, Thailand, mm-hmm. Florida, anywhere else you've been? Uh, just uh, just my home country, Vietnam. Uh, that's that's pretty much the. So in Vietnam, did you fish for snakeheads when you were there visiting? They have they have them there where you visit. Yeah, I caught the giant snakehead there. Oh, that's where the yeah, giant was. That's at. Where the okay, giant okay, was. okay, I'm confused. Uh, okay, I got you. The thing about Vietnam, you. it's there's the, the fishing culture there is growing. Mm-hmm. There's a handful of people that game fish for them. Mm-hmm. The culture is very much um, grounded in eating fish. Yeah, uh, it's a big part of the diet. So even yeah, all of snakehead is fair game. Um, but there's a group of uh, anglers uh, that I happen uh, to my buddies that I happen uh, to get link up with. They're very fish catch and release. Um, they see the uh, them as sport fish. Um, but because of the fact that I mentioned earlier that the people see them as food, they f- by all means catch them uh, catch fish for food. There's no regulations there. Oh, okay. There's a lot of netting. Okay. There's a lot of right, electro right. fishing. That's a real big thing now. Yeah, right. electro it's a fishing? real big shame. Oh, yeah. Wow. The electro fishing. You know, you buy a set for like, you know, $20, $30 and just light up in a small little area and just scoop up all the fish. And that's great for food, but people that are trying to catch fish for game fish, I mean, you, you don't you don't have much picking. Well, not so, just that, so, but you got to sustain yeah. the food population too. And uh, so a lot of the fishing there is still grounded in – yeah, you have some fun fishing, but you catch them, bring home for dinner. Right. So, the, like in the city and in the country, there's some ponds that you can pay people put fish in there, and you catch them up and do whatever you want with them. But that's really the bulk of the fishing there. I was really fortunate to have find that once this spot. You know, it's just so such a special place because that's it literally probably special, one man. of the last place in Vietnam where you can find fish like that. Right. You know, so. Uh, so, so are they doing anything to try to protect the area, or, or do, do any kind of conservation? Or? That area, that area is is protected. That okay. that's that's there for for good. Um, so, 
But but thank, but, the, but the outside areas where where you say they're seeing like impacts and things like that is anybody? There's no regulation. There's no regulation. There's no government regulation. Uh, that's that's the sad part. I don't understand why they wouldn't yeah, have that just, in place. It's, I mean, I third, third world country, man. Okay, I got you. <laughs> There's a lot of mouths to feed. Right, that's, I got you. That's so uh, one of the, one of the things that I like to talk to you about is like value, right? How, sure. How, how, how we see value in these fish? Yes. Let's, snake, let's talk about snakehead species specifically. Um, you know, people that uh, like even around here, they like snakehead for food. Yes. And though, so you know, you guys have a you, you see an issue here. So one we, we have a little bit of a different yeah, a scenario different here than anywhere else, else for sure. You know so, what I mean? Absolutely. You know, w- one way you can do that, just eat them. And so there's value in the fish by, yeah, for eating it. I agree. For me, as a diehard snakehead angler, I see that a little bit differently. I mean, I'll occasionally keep maybe 10% of my catches as far as snakehead. I see the value in that fish as being a purely a game fish. Right. I'm just a snakehead fanatic. So that's, and that's one just, one thing we do always advocate is is if you're going to harvest the fish, just make sure you, it it doesn't go to waste. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's for the freezer. It's not just yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You hate seeing people just throw it uh, like that's littering. Well, it burns exactly. me up. It, that yeah. burns me up when I see those pictures too. 100%. And I want you to know that 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 very it upsets me a lot when yeah. somebody does that. It's very disrespectful to the fish. We're, right. we're always know, advocating so. for responsible harvesting. Right. That, that's that's our number one goal. Yeah, but um, and if you're not going to harvest it, put it back where you got right. it. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. You know, we've got plenty of eagles around here, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, but I, but I know you. I, I know your passion, and we know we know that you know that you don't harvest the fish, and that's okay. Yeah, and I, we Most want people to know that. Yeah. I mean, me and you, we get along fine out oh, there yeah. fishing. You know what I mean? We're not, we don't clash heads. We may yeah. have different views, or what I see here is different than what you say. But I don't I don't judge Chuang, and I don't judge anybody else out there. For whatever Never have. the value right. the fish means to them, let's use that from now on the value because these fish absolutely do have yeah. value. They have and value in, in every. In I think a lot of people get caught up in that you know generalization, like mm-hmm. we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So you know if you generalize and uh, if you take just black water, and you're seeing all these impacts that it's having, and you're saying, oh, this species is terrible. Everywhere it goes, it eats everything. You can't do that right. because it, where we're from, uh, New Jersey and uh, Philadelphia area. It hasn't happened. Right, right. Uh, apparently in the Potomac, it ha- hasn't happened. On the flip side, there's, uh, I used to be one of them, diehard guys that really just defend this species. Oh, there's no impacts happening in it anywhere. I don't think it's black and white. Not very many things in life are. So That's exactly right. To, say, to generalize over this, area, oh, it's not ha- having any impacts. You're just shutting your eyes on, on an issue that's happening. And that, that's so, what we've, we've that's been That's all I'll say about that. That's what we've been advocating from day one is, is the impacts that we talk about are what we're seeing locally here in the Blackwater system. And that's, like like Kaz always says, this isn't the the best place to put a northern snakehead. It's the perfect place to put a northern snakehead. Mm. And, and and that's the difference between what we talk about, the numbers and, and the decline in the perch and the, and the bluegill. It's because this system is made up, it's made almost perfectly for the snakehead to to thrive in. So I mean, I, I, I talk to quite a few people, you know, in messages and stuff up your way. And I tell them, you know, if you're not seeing it, you're not seeing it. I, I totally exactly agree with you right. 100%. Yeah. If you don't want to keep them, you want to chuck them back overboard yeah. and they're not doing anything, man, do your thing. You know, that's your right as an angler. I think the whole angler's choice thing is 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 where, you know, the line should be. You know, whether you want to keep it, you don't want to <clears> keep it. You know, we all get along. We all still continue to help one another. You know what I mean? Because as far as we know, we know that we know these fish are never going to go anywhere, no matter where they're at, you know, to begin with. They're never going to be out of the suspect. They're never going to be out of the bush. We know they're never going to go anywhere. So I agree with you 100%. There's a way for us all to embrace what we have. I think a big part of the problem is, is today's political atmosphere is just so, it's such a, a, (laughs) I don't know the right word for it. Angry, but it's a very polarized place and and people get very angry and that, and that has translated into every other aspect. And you know, social media just makes things worse. You're not seeing the the person in, uh, in person and, uh, I mean, as long as I've been uh, in this uh, things growing uh, with the snakehead and the social media, it's just like conversations that people are having about this fish. And I mean, I used to do it, but I'm not anymore because I got sick and tired of it. Mm-hmm. There's just too much drama over releasing or, or not releasing a, a damn fish. And it's I, agree. Just, <laughs> I agree. I agree. I got sick of it. So I mean, I, I'm just doing my own thing. And you know? that, and that, I'll, I'll tell people yeah. what I know. That's all. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'll tell people what I know. They take what they want from it. You, you've been you've been very instrumental in the snakehead. You know, industry. You've been very instrumental, even to myself. I've learned a lot from you too. You know, so I did I, not know that. So I absolutely, it. absolutely. I mean, 
I, I mean, I may not talk a lot about it, but believe me, I, I just like everybody else. I look and I watch too, man. You know, and I've watched yeah. you grow so much, and I think that for me, whether whether you're a release guy, you're a catch guy, I don't care what you are. For me, uh, some of the most exciting thing, the most exciting thing to me has been to watch people grow, watch people new to the sport, watch them fall in love with it, watch them get the passion, watch them all of a sudden looking for a better bait from somebody, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, there's a lot that comes with this, and there's a lot of good that comes with this, you know, and I will say that openly. there's a lot of good that's come with this for financially, oh, economically. For, for the entire county you know of Dorchester. I mean? So, so, so I, I cannot ever take that away from the snakehead, you know what I mean? And yeah. as far as, as far as everywhere else goes, and I say it all the time, even in my seminars, what I talk about is what, I have seen because I haven't been to any of the other areas to sit there and look somebody in the eye and honestly say, Hey, I saw this in yeah. the tuck Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I don't, I don't have that for So for those of you out there that think that I'm some kind of expert around the world, I'm not, you know, the only thing that, 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 that I see or we see is what we see here. And that's why we want to bring other anglers on the show, that's exactly no right. matter where they stand, no matter what their view is. And let's talk about what's going on. You yeah. know what I mean? That's let's talk about how idea. awesome it is. Let's try to bring some of the economic impact that we're receiving here in the Eastern Shore your way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that that's our whole goal, you know, it, to, to keep this circle going, to keep the hype going, to keep the passion going, to keep these people fishing. Right. You know, that kind of right. thing. Whether you keep not, that doesn't matter. Right. You know, <laughs> my, my, my MO is what I just told you. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, and yeah, I, I respect everybody out there. I mean, I was talking to who was it, Sandy Kennedy, and what's her husband's name? Uh, Kevin. I was talking to yeah. him uh, a while back, and you know, I explained to they've him been, too. They've been fishing for them before they even blew up in their area. Yeah, no, while now. Right. So I've had a chance to talk like to him, and I told maybe. him. And there's another boy. I think his name's Shannon. You know, I think they want to get together and come down here or something. Like that. But I've okay. talked to them too, and I've yeah. talked to them about what they see, and, yeah, and, nice I, and it's 100 percent what you're telling me. They don't see any kind of. Yeah, they, know, they would know anything. Absolutely, they would know. <laughs> absolutely, and that's why I'm making a We're point to bring long that before up. I, 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 right. I started fishing, right? And fishing. that's why yeah. I want to bring that up because I've talked to other people than just you. I've talked to several people, you know, and yeah. I hear the same thing every place. So, hey, man, you guys know more than we know up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I have no no right to to say, hey, in New Jersey, you better start killing them off. <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> you know I, what's funny? One of our lakes, uh, Newton Lake, um, that's where I I really targeted them heavily in 2016. <laughs> Uh, years and years pass. They they spray pesticide every year, but like yeah, last year, they sprayed a lot to control the weeds. Snakehead fishing hasn't been the same at that lake. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. I, I, it's got to be the cover. It's got to be the top cover because they hang out in shallow areas. If right. there's no top cover, they're afraid you know, birds are gonna eat them. So 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 what do you think? You think you think then then poison the grass I, caused them? I to, think vegetation to leave? has to do with it. Yeah, I mean that because, because there is a way out. There's a there's a um, fish bridge. Uh, oh, uh, a ladder. A ladder, ladder. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fish ladder down okay. at the end of the lake. But um, 2016, I hammered them over that place. It was it was like my place to go, and uh, and man, in years past, it just has not been snaky, man. Well, I also, you know, the other thing yeah. I noticed, people too, don't see fry balls there. Right. I mean, the other thing I noticed, too, is I, I think that the states would be a little more vocal if they were seeing something, you know, mm -hmm. and I think the anglers would be a little more vocal yeah. if they were seeing something. So and like I said, I've talked to Kevin, I've opened the door up to him and said, come on down here. You know, I'll be happy to take you out and show you around. Yeah. You know, you, you don't have to keep anything on my behalf to appease me. I mean, mm -hmm. that's not what it's about. Come on down. Let's do this. You know, let's yeah. have fun. That's what that's what I think we all want to do. We all just want to have fun. Yeah. Know? So, Trong, what's your, what's your biggest northern snakehead? Tell us uh, about that experience. Last year, man, uh, ten pounds, uh, and I, you know, I'm I'm a little bit embarrassed about that because I mean, uh, I had been targeting them for you know, like I said, since 2016, and uh, those those guys, uh, you know, just started you know, several months, a year, hammered out a PB like 12 pounds, <laughs> right. 11 pounds, like my wife. I'm like, <laughs> right. mm. So, uh, you know, last year I, I was like, you know, my chances aren't very high in the area. I'm, at least I, I can't find them. So I decided to come down here and uh, went out with uh, Steve uh, Camboros, um and uh, put on put me on a 10-pound. I'd like to get him on here too sometime. Maybe. Yeah, it was a very knowledgeable guy. Really knows what he's talking about, uh, what what he knows. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was a blast. It just it blew up my frog in the <laughs> – least likely is the place i started complaining i was like man this is rough out here <laughs> not not a minute after <laughs> it always seems to happen that way yeah. so, so how, how many did you catch that day when you came uh, man i don't i don't think i caught two 
<laughs> I think that was the only one. Hopefully, we're gonna do a little better than I told, that today. I told, so. I told Steve, and, he, and Steve said, uh, you, "You're you're kind of a prophet." I told him uh, before we started, uh, or, or not before we started, uh, a little bit into it. I said, "Steve, it's one of those days where either I'm gonna skunk out or just have something really nice, man." And uh, I caught something really nice. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll get a big run this year. How, how how many opportunities have you had to come down here and fish? Just that one. Just that one time. Just that one. Yeah, I'm. It's just so busy, man. I I, I know you are. I got a two year old. That's why we're doing what we're doing today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got a two year old, uh, a full time job, part time job with this this little lure making thing. So I know exactly it's, what it's you're tough, saying. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, being being that you just said the word lure making thing, That's right. what do you think That's you want to uh, shift over there and yeah. let's start talking about some SS custom baits? Absolutely. And let me tell you what, folks. You know, I, you know, you know, I I back quite a few tackle guys out here and and i think the thing that's most attractive about strong spades is the the the, the, the i'm going to use the word beefiness the mm-hmm. beefiness of of this this stuff that he, that these guys are making again i've said it a thousand times the coolest thing that i'm seeing is you watch these guys grow you watch them hey i'm going to make my own thing man i'm going to get outside the box because just like everybody else we're frustrated with standard tackle in the market that just cannot support and hold these fish. Your standard bass tackle is not going to hold a 15, 16 pound snakehead. I don't care. I mean, I can show you bait after bait after bait that I've bought from commercialized companies that got straightened hooks laying in the tackle box that I will never throw again and I will never buy again because that snakehead I lost was that big yep. and it broke my heart that bad. So I think Trong's on a, on a, on a good line right now yep. to start mending a lot of hearts out there that have been getting broke. We're going to start uh, bringing the community back together and putting them on some big fish. So, Trong, let's talk about this tackle. So I started this thing back in uh, May of last year, and uh, we're, I'm working on it with, um, with my partner, uh, Tyler. He couldn't be here today. Um, he's half the What's operation. up, Tyler? You're doing a good <laughs> job, buddy. Keep doing what you're doing. Excellent job he's doing. I, could, I couldn't do it without him, to be honest with you. Um, my experience with it, I, I take everything I've learned from fishing for these for uh, fish for a few short years, um, it, just improving on existing platforms that have been successful, um, making components better, making design the design better. It's just my personal experience I, I put into this lore. Um, it's grown a lot more than I thought it would have. <laughs> I told you in the beginning, man. Um, <laughs> and I mean... I can't believe what I've done with my brand. I mean, I'm not saying that with any arrogance at all. No, you should um, say it because you've done a great job, man. You know, uh, I I, lo- I love the look of my lures. <laughs> <laughs> They're different from other things that I've seen. I don't. I don't honestly, I don't know how uh, how I come up with these things. Look, he, um, he's being humble right now. I'm telling you that he's being straight up humble because this stuff is beautiful. Go ahead. So, um, all of our wires are 0. .051 inch musky wire. Um, we have to uh, wow. improvise. To make them fit, mm-hmm. so that's I think that's a, a big hurdle as to why a lot of people have don't really do it. Um, we powder coat our baits, bake them um, so they're a little bit more durable in that aspect. Um, every single component uh, is high quality. Uh, y- you don't really see much plastic on there because why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the, I think I think metal is better. Um, so why don't, why don't you show off yeah, let's, one, let's, Yeah, let's, let's go through. I'll, I'll, I'll brief you more in uh, uh, the specific. Let's start with, let's start with the Argus. Let's start with the okay, Argus. That was, with the, Argus. Uh, the first iteration of this lure uh, did not look like this. Um, so this is a, um, you can see here. I just want to show how thick, how big them hooks are. Yeah. Right. We, uh, full disclosure, originally we used trocar hooks. We now just recently changed over to owner. I, I didn't make the announcement yet, and um, I think, to be honest, it, it might be a better hook. Um, I, actually, I think it, it'll be a better hook. It's the same gauge, so you're not losing any strength there. But um, talk, talk, talk a little bit about about this this little design that we're seeing right here. Oh yeah, you know? so uh, most people use snaps um, for that blade. Um, That's why I want to talk about it because you're doing something different. All fine and good for uh, bass, but for snakehead. Um, the, if you look at any snap wire, it's pretty relatively thin gauged, and you literally have a connection as to where it's just a clip on. Um, if uh, th- there's any type of leverage where it can death roll, that snap is breaking right off. So early on, I, I put on a snap too, but I was like, uh, there's got to be a way to uh, make this better. So I found a wire that uh, that we can put on the front of that blade. That's a 2X um, strong split ring. On there, 
and uh, right after connected to the jig head is uh, a wrapped wire that uh, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I, I want everybody wrap, to see that that I hand wrap. Um, so that is our uh, Argus bladed jig. All right, let's Very talk. Nice. Uh, let's talk a little bit of the Cobra next. Cobra was our second lure. I really like spinner baits. It is uh, probably, I completely honest, I that's probably my favorite lure for a uh, bullseye snakehead. And um, when I started using um, spinner baits for snakehead, obviously, you know, you use a um, any any old anyone who's ever fished for snakehead and caught one with a spinner bait will know how they bend them into pretzels. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> found out out after the first one, I said no. Um, there's got to be something better, so I uh, started using Terminator spinner baits, which unfortunately they don't make anymore. Right. But so uh, use those for heavily for bullseye snakehead, and then we found out another problem. The wire is fine. The wire is uh, titanium, so it snaps right back. It's perfect. But I guess they decreased in quality or something because. Because bullseye snake had uh, uh, death roll so much, they literally ripped the wire off of the head. Holy <laughs> oh, cow. And we were pulling back wires, me and my buddy. Wow. This was after three, four fish. Um, so that's what I learned from that. So going into making this lure, I said, let me go with the biggest wire that I could. Hmm. So we made a musky wire fit into that. Oh, this is the baby cobra, by the way. This yeah, is the baby. This is a new... Uh, yeah. this is a new um, can you show the size comparison between? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the uh, that's the standard half ounce cobra right there. Um, so yeah, we put that wire in there. Um, I wanted some nice looking blades, so uh, nothing a lot of people have seen. So a lot of people are crazy about that serrated willow blade. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. With it's like a hexagon pattern, so it throws a lot of uh, refracts a lot of light in different ways. Um, and I changed the design of the wire most pretty much all spinner baits you can find on the market the top arm is longer than the bottom arm and it causes the blade to spin out like way out the back like this far right and um a lot of times you would get short strikes on the blade and you wouldn't get hooked up and i said oh well, i see what you're saying so what you did is yeah. you shortened so this we arm the right here and yeah. brought this blade forward exactly. to open up a bite area so i got it oh elongated. yeah look at that it's an elongated um lure so that makes sense. you can actually, it. if they bite the top blade, you can sh get a chin hook, <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> if you set the hook right. So um, yeah, that's a that's a great yeah, that's, that's a great idea behind that concept to shorten yeah. that arm that's and just bring it tweaks, back. Small little tweaks that I made right. to try to improve it for snakehead fishing because they they don't they have smaller mouths. They don't they have teeth for a reason. They don't inhale like a bass right, does. Exactly. Large mouth bass has a massive mouth and inhales and all pulls in all kinds of water. These fish do bite um the lure so you know now th 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 this is also the uh this is the baby this is the baby cobra yeah. it's just another 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 color i'm just want to show folks um okay let's uh let's look into now and the next one was our dragon buzz bait this you know is this a, is my absolute favorite pretty i i believe i i think it's pretty uh, unique design in terms of buzz baits kaz uh kaz was a huge fan of the oh. uh, free swinging one oh my God. Yes. We have two types: the attached and free swinging. That's the free swinging one. Free and um, show, the, show the knuckle on it. That's a wire. That's a two two wire that's tied together. Oh, or not tied together. The thing the thing that I like about this this particular buzz bait here, this one, and and the reason I like it so much is if if you if I can kind of show the. Are you talking you, about the drop? Yeah, the drop. So the drop so is what crucial. I, what I like about what I like about this one over the fix is the drop that I can. Move it faster in this with a with, with a trailer. I can swing a little faster with this being free yeah. swinging like this. You know what I mean? By putting a trailer on here, I can actually give it mo loose motion that I don't get from yeah. the the affixed arm. You know what I mean? There are disadvantages to yeah. the free swinging. Yeah. Uh, in full disclosure, if you're fishing a heavily vegetated, oh area, yeah, absolutely, you're, you're absolutely. Gonna, whereas absolutely. this one goes yes. right over yes. vegetation yes. Yes. much yes. easier. Yes. 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 Um, but um, you can see the bend right there. Yeah. That that's crucial for a buzz bait of this type to run properly because if you were to just have a straight inline with a jig head, that jig head without a weight, you know, dropping down like that is gonna spin around, around, and around. This allows for that uh, weight to act as a um, as a cue. Mm. 
So. Pretty man, we, I just absolutely love all these baits that you got. What, what would you like to talk about? So, next? Uh, I want to talk about our new lures um, that we will be debuting at the Snakehead Festival in April. The first um, annual Maryland Snakehead yeah. Festival. The first <laughs> We're annual, excited. The dude. only, the one and only. <laughs> right. um, we started getting into soft plastics and um, just a real simple. Uh, th- well, let's talk about the Franken Frog. Why not? Yeah, this was um, one that I worked on for quite a while. I went through a lot of uh, issues with it, um, production, mold, design, and uh, finally came up with this design here. Um, It looks different than pretty much most frogs on the market. And why? Because it's not a bass. I mean, you could use a catch bass, but it was, again, snakehead-minded frog because snakeheads are notoriously for... uh, for, um, short striking things mm-hmm. and with legs flapping back back there that's uh you know they love biting legs <laughs> so why don't we move the legs up front that's right yeah, exactly seven knot hook fits right in the back right there so unless you're you're you're, you're just absolutely terrible it's it's highly unlikely you're gonna miss a fish right if it takes that lure um there's no there's really like a half inch for error unless you know well, that, that fish doesn't take it. What I'm noticing right now about this bait, and I think it's going to be a very, very good asset, is by you moving those legs forwards the way you did, it creates a more neutral buoyancy for the bait, I believe. Just yes. looking at and the way And the way, and the way, and the way, if you look at, if yeah. you look at the design of this stomach, you know, here. You can see how wide it is. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a very good frog uh, for, you know, burn, you can burn it, but it excels at moving slowly. Because it's so wide, and um, you know that body and those legs right there, so you can fish it real slow, and it'll. It just it'll looks bubble. mean, man. Yeah, yeah it does. You know? I mean, uh, the facial expression mm-hmm. on this thing looks like, I'm coming, bro. <laughs> <laughs> coming for them mosquitoes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's mm. our Franken frog. Oh, I don't even see the purple one. Show the purple one. Oh, I didn't see that either. Those are the, our uh, four colors that we will be having. That's fantastic. I think I think the other thing you're doing is, is you're not getting into a million and five different colors. You're keeping I, everything very basic. You know, the, I don't I don't know what the need is for twenty colors on a bait. You know, I, I mean? think it sells the fishermen. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's absolutely. exactly right. In, in my experience, <laughs> I don't believe Northern Snakehead care about color. I don't either. <laughs> I, I mean, we're fishing in such heavy cover. I mean, why do they why right. don't they care about color? Right. <laughs> I think it's a bass fisherman. <laughs> I, for uh you know for a million different colors right i would just keep it really basic you know these are our complementary um uh, swim baits uh snake shads it's a um a, a thin narrow swim bait I like that it. fits onto any of our lures without adding uh unnecessary drag uh what we found out with our cobra especially was uh, batter swim baits uh, swung the uh, the the, the sp- uh, spinner bait back and forth, which was kind of messing up the action. So I made this. It's just a little teaser trail right there, uh, tail right there, and um, you know it's just a, something extra. It gr- looks great with the Argus. Uh, I think, I think the swing you on can that thing is amazing uh, as a finesse swim bait as well. You know when they're finicky, they want something smaller, smaller profile. Absolutely gorgeous, man. That's one thing I can say. Now you know me. I'm pretty sure this is going to be. Is, uh, this we, is, this we literally made these up this week. Um, I had worked on this uh, for throughout the whole winter. Our first one didn't turn out so hot, and I had to go back to the drawing board and uh, came up with this thing. This is the SS inline. I said it in my post. This is not your granddaddy spinner. <laughs> That's because not, it's man. not. <laughs> that, thing, that thing's uh, on steroids uh, like you wouldn't believe, bro. I, I don't believe... And I, I've I've looked a little bit. I don't believe there's anything in this size platform. And t- you put that and, next yeah, to the and, and, and Tyler, five. I want because Tyler Judd made a comment about the maps. Yeah, this is this is the difference That's in the beef, map. man. Okay, I'll, I'll put up in, a in close the, up in the, in the custom, um, you know, and I mean? not just a maps. That's a maps number five. That's number five. Yeah, um, that's a that's a very successful size um, for bigger snakeheads um, that I notice. And at least in our area. Look at the difference in the hooks. Right. What I, what, that's what I want to point out right now. Look at the gauge that's a VMC of the hook. For we, that's here. And, and we've then look always, at the gauge We've always loved the hook. maps. We've and always loved right the maps. Here. But look at the difference in that. I mean, th- 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 that hook is almost twice as thick as what the maps is. And, and we honestly, love maps and we sell a lot of maps. We're looking at the camera right now and, and, and the screen is not doing it justice as what it does right. in real I'll life. I'll put up a few high quality shots comparing the hooks and the wire um, uh, once you... Uh, once I, um, you can kind of see a little a better days. there, you yeah. know, the thinness of yeah. the of this hook versus the thickness of 
this hook here. Yeah, it's the same uh, wire that we use for our buzz bait. Mm-hmm. Um, in this uh, small little... Uh, Mike small Stewart, little you spot. better grab Pouty, yeah. slap a minnow on the back of them bad boys. We, uh, that's a hand-tied um, a hook with a bucktail and a flashaboo, holographic flashaboo. And that way, we actually custom make ourselves. Um, that's a hand-poured and uh, powder-coated. That's a, that's a, that weight isn't even supposed to be on that spinner. You, you, you got you got to be awfully busy, busy, because I'm just looking at what you're putting into these baits, and I, I see the box of baits you got with you right now, and <laughs> I guess you should really thank God you got somebody to help you like Tyler. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, he's, a, I, he's been absolutely instrumental. I mean, like I said, I couldn't do this without him. When I originally came to him, you know, he's a really busy dude with, uh, you know, his uh, business uh, construction. Uh, he's got a full-time. Right. He works way more than 40 hours a week. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm I'm so happy to have him. You know, he's I, I couldn't do it without him. So 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 how much has your business grown since you opened the door? I can't put a number on it, but uh, when we started in May, I didn't think that a couple months later we would have the kind of orders that we did. Right. And then we, uh, you guys were the first bait shops um, that uh, I went to. I, I talked to you, Cass. Yeah, and I went and started talking to everybody else, too, and, for you. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I really appreciate that. No and then I went to see you guys down last year. And, um, you know, I appreciate you picking up and yeah, help, helping, uh, you know, spread the word. About I, 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 I know Mike up at Anglers is loving them. I know uh, John Everett Denton's loving them. Yeah, so uh, I really appreciate stuff. it. Yep. Yeah. And I, I, think, I think that you're just now... Strong, actually, you're just starting to scratch the market, man. You haven't even seen that what's Trying coming to, your yeah, way. That's, I mean, that's my long game. I, I, th- I think the big picture that I see for you is amazing. I don't think that you'll be doing what you're doing full time. I think you're going to get away from and do this. Is for this brand to be the first and number one associated um, snakehead association uh, um, uh, with this uh, with this brand. So, like, someone mentioned snakehead lures. I want them to know SS Custom Baits. That that's my vision for this brand. I, I think you're doing a great job, and I, I think I think you've been very humble through the whole thing. I mean, we hear that from you today oh, when you're talking. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's the first first line of lures that I've seen that that are strictly targeting snakeheads. I mean, the yeah. entire line is built just for snakeheads. It's it's an amazing line. It really sure, is. you can catch uh, other fish on them. Sure. I, I caught a 39 inch tiger muskie on my cobra, which <laughs> I hate. Damn that. Proud I, I got to tell you, this little white spinner, this spinner right here, I will knock the hell yeah, out of rockfish uh, here. That's actually spinner right yeah, there. So yeah, I mean, that's yours. Th- 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 this is going to knock the hell out of rockfish. I mean, it's going to knock the hell out of white perch. It's going to knock the hell out of speckled trout. It's going to knock the hell out of bluefish. It's, I'm going to I'm going to show that this bait has many many more applications just a snakehead. Looking at what I'm looking at now, because what I see right now is a great bait. That's transitional, not just for snakeheads, but this is going to be a great bait for saltwater species, also too, Absolutely. that are above average size. Let's say, you know, I can see this for me as a great red drum lure here in the coves in August and September. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And them drum, they're not big, but I mean they're 18 to 24 inches, yep. and they will crush something like that faster than you can get it by them. I can tell you that. You know, I I, I see lots. I mean, I see my cousin Ricky throwing these on the flats in Chincoteague. You know, look, looking for or watch a pre looking for flounder with a minnow hooked to the back oh, of yeah. it. You know no what I mean? Oh, I totally forgot. We have an inline version of that. I was testing this out the other day. John, you got anything else over there that we don't know about? You want to? Of course I do. I know you. Oh, of course you I do. Oh my look lord! At look at this baby boy. Oh my gosh! I yeah, like that's that. Uh, that, that that runs pretty well as well. Um, that, no doubt my mind. The uh, we uh, we pour that uh, little weight on there too. Because it again acts as a keel so that this thing doesn't spin around ridiculously. Right. Um, just things that you you only find out once you start testing it. I, I think that's the other thing too, because you know you've talked to me sometimes when you got a new bait and you're out testing. I think it's really good that you're putting that time in to go out there and make sure before you release a bait to the market or before you, you release something to the public that yeah. you have ensured that the quality is there and that the customer is going to get what they're paying for, and you're not going to have to have that phone call the next day say, "Hey, man, what's wrong with this right. thing." So I, I think mean, all the extra work that you're doing might be a lot more time consuming, and I'm sure that it is, but uh, you're definitely doing doing the right thing. I mean, this is this is. I'm not I'm not trying to be crazy. I mean, this is it, man. This is what everybody's been looking for. So here it is, folks. Can I Get, show off this color real quick? Yeah, you, you can show off whatever this is one you of want my new colors. Off. This is called Rainbow's End. I just, I just thought that, it was that, a cool black. Yeah, with I mean like that that really that, that, that night wise, that right there, that yeah. right there would be a bait for here at night, uh, you know, for bass fishing. And who knows? Here, here's the thing, you know, 
Trump, when we first started talking and we were talking about numbers and we were talking about stuff, you know, in the beginning, I told you I never saw him hibernate. I never saw him do anything. Yeah, yeah. Last year, I was able to put together some night patterns. Oh, really? And some good night patterns. Interesting. And I think this year that I'm going to focus some more on the night fishing end for snakeheads because yeah. we don't know how to catch them during the day. Yeah. So I think this year I'm going to devote some more time to the angler who's Wants to roll dice and come down here at night and maybe do some night fishing. Yeah, you don't you know? typically hear about northern snakehead and night fishing. So for me, so far, I've been able to do it with lighted bobbers. Okay. okay I've been able to do it with some noisy lures on the surface. Okay. Um, I haven't been able to do it with a spinner. I haven't been able to do it with anything that I'm using is either sound or, 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 or light. Like, this is going to sound so stupid. My mom bought me this fishing lure off a of television yeah. that you can recharge. Okay. And it's red. It's okay. a red yeah, light yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's, Dude, yeah, I, I can talking. tell you right now, I caught over probably 200 on yeah. that stupid-ass TV lure last year that had a light in it. So they're probably light sensors. Well, think, think about the bow guys. I'm not yeah. saying use this to go kill fish. I'm okay. saying the bow guys are successful because of light. The okay. light draws the fish up. Yeah. They come to it. You yeah. know what I mean? So I think with the lighted bobber with rattles, you're... Producing the sound, yeah. they're hearing it. They're curious enough as it is already, so they're coming in to look to see what that noise is. Then you got that light sitting there above my minnow that's only three inches yeah, below yeah. the bobber. Yeah. And the coolest thing about it is you can see the snakehead circle the son of a gun really? to decide awesome, to man. eat it, man. Wow. You know. So I did this a lot. I did this. I want to say I did this probably. I don't know. Probably. 20, 30 times last year. Yeah. And most nights I was successful with a few fish. Yeah. I had a couple nights where I had a lot of fish. And then I had nights where I only had one fish, I had two fish. Yeah, know? I think I think the reason why you know, uh, uh, you probably won't be very successful with night fishing for northern is that they they have very poor vision. Yeah. Probably the poorest vision, the smallest eyes out of any of the large snakehead species. And, and that's exactly why I took yeah. the thought the way that I did. Yeah. Sound. Yeah. You know, the rattles in that floating bobber with the light, you know, you could hear they, that. They, like they a got those bumps on top. in front of the, the their heads, the little uh, bumps, uh, sensory organs, probably, right. for vibration. Right. So, so that's yeah. what I was thinking. And, the, you know, think about that thought. jerk bait mm -hmm. with the light getting yeah. jerked through the water, coming down out of the column a little bit. Yeah. So maybe these little two ideas I just gave, you can go back or you can think about putting them together and you can come up with something else for SS Customs, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... You know, we're, we're getting to the end here. We're, we're 40, what are you into it? 47 minutes. This was, this was a good show. Trong, we got a lot of good content, a lot of good information for the folks out there. So, Eddie, what, 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 what you got anything you want to ask him? No, I think, I, th I think we can show these baits one more time because they are Absolutely. fantastic. My Absolutely. goodness. Absolutely. I mean, that is just fantastic Absolutely. work there. Um, Absolutely. But no, Trong, thank you very much for coming on, man. It's been a great show. I really show. appreciate you guys. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you guys inviting me on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Showing off my product. And we're going fishing after this. So Absolutely. You can either cuss me out later or love me later. It'll be <laughs> one of the two. So, Kaz, any more more? No, I think uh, I think uh, we miss you, Gary, and we can't wait for you to get back. That's so right. that's my one more. We're saying prayers for you. Hope you feel better. Everything goes good with the surgery. Um, 100%. And you know, if you need anything, we're here for you. We'll be, we'll be up there to shake your bed and. Have a toga party after dark sometime. So, <laughs> so I think for for Trong and for absent Gary and then for Kaz and myself, thank you all for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.